Hey, just want to make a quick short uh, video. I actually, uh, someone had just uh, sent me a message basically and they said, you know, they just really encouraged me. They said, I really enjoy your videos and I just really hope you keep making them. And I responded back to them that, you know, if they were the only one that basically watched that I would continue to make videos for them. And then I put a side note and that was that I believe that if Jesus, you know, he would have literally personally gave himself on the cross if she was the only one that would have believed. Well, I said that, and then I thought to myself, you know what, I need to share. Um, I have some videos, and you know, you may have seen them, you may have not, but I've shared a dream that I had when which there was a lady and her daughter. This was a mother and a daughter. And the daughter did not know Jesus, and I knew the mother didn't know Jesus either. Um, and they were kind of raised out in the country, and uh, they basically, I mean, they cussed all the time, they drank, they smoked, they partied, they, you know what I mean, they just did all kinds of stuff. I mean, they were just, you know, their life was a mess. I mean, it just really was. And uh, I love these two men. They were just precious to me. This, this girl, she was so humble. She was so meek. She had such a, uh, just an issue with, you know, forgiving herself and thinking good about herself. Had a lot of, uh, just a really pretty girl, but uh, just had a lot of issues of just uh, self-condemnation, uh, second-guessing oneself, wondering if she would ever be you know, loved you know, by someone or accepted by anyone. So had real issues in that area. Well, I had a dream one night, and the dream is it was literally, it was at nighttime. I could see the moonlight up above, and all it was, it was a very simple dream. And I'm just going to show this is simple and sweet. This is probably going to be five minutes. I'm going to be done. But what it was was is just there was snow all around, and there was a, you know, like a log uh, that was, you know, around a, like a fire. You know, it was a, you know, like a fire. I mean, that's what it was. <laughs> and uh, uh, this mother and daughter were sitting on that log. And in the dream, I was right behind them. And I could see clearly it was the mother and daughter I knew. that I used to work with this girl. Anyways, and uh, as I'm watching the scene, really kind of wondering how I got, you know, into the winter area, because I don't think it was winter at the time. I think it was like uh, spring, and here it's like winter, you know what I mean? And I learned later in dreams that sometimes when you see when it's out of season, it means this is the season they are going through. They're going through a winter season, a very difficult season in their life. And uh, anyway, so as I'm watching the scene, I hear a voice behind me, and the voice literally said... If they were the only ones who would have believed, I would have gone back on the cross and given my life for them. Well, when I heard that, of course, I knew that was the voice of Jesus. And what he was literally saying was, he's saying, look, all I need you to do is basically just tell them about me. I'll do the rest, but just let them know that I gave my, you know, self for them and, and make sure they understand the message and make sure it's clear to them that I am the way of salvation. That's why I gave myself on my life on the cross. But what was amazing is, is that he said basically that he would be willing to go back on the cross if it was necessary just for this mother and daughter. And I thought to myself, do you realize the horror and the absolute pain and suffering that that he went through on the cross. I mean, with having, you know, nails in his hands and his feet, a crown of thorns on his head. I mean, he was whipped repeatedly and repeatedly over and over again. And he just said that he would go through all of that just to bring one more person into his kingdom. So I just want to encourage you, you may not know the heart and love of Jesus Christ, but when Jesse Duplantis was in heaven, very specifically, Jesus wept on Jesse's shoulder. And Jesus said that I cannot change the choice that men make. I pray, you know, I hope that, you know, you will make the right decision. But the truth of the matter is, is that Jesus himself, even though he loves you, even though he died on the cross for you, even though he shed his blood, if you choose to say no to heaven, no to love, no to goodness, to faithfulness, to kindness, to friendship, to fellowship, to all the wonderful, beautiful things of his kingdom, and you choose darkness, and you choose hate, and you choose Satan over God, God cannot turn that around. One day you will have to face an almighty judge who is going to have to lay open the books and judge you of those things that are written. Now, he doesn't want to do that. That's why Jesus wept on Jesse's shoulder. He said, the one thing... The Bible says that God is going to wipe the tears of, of there'll be no more sorrow, there'll be no more death, and there'll be no more suffering. 
But the last tear that God the Father is going to wipe is the tear of his own son when his own son has to tell the creation that he loves, that he died for, that he shed his blood for, that he went to the cross for so they could be forgiven of all their sins. No matter what those sins were, no matter how horrid they were, he gave his life on the cross for every single person ever born from every nation, from every country, from every city, from every town, from every person born from the time of Adam until the time he returns for every single person. The Bible says God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son whoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. So I'm just telling you right now, man, Jesus said you must be born again. You must be born from above and have God as your father. When you came in the world, you were born of the flesh, but you must be born of the spirit. So I just want to encourage you, man, that look, you know, Jesus did give his life. He would be willing to go back on the cross just for you alone, just so you could make heaven. But he doesn't need to because the Bible says by one sacrifice, he has perfected forever all those that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for you. Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father, interceding in your behalf, the Holy Spirit is trying to draw your heart to Jesus Christ before he comes back and to tell you that you need Jesus Christ. You have been, you know, bitten by sin. All of us have sinned and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And since Jesus would be willing to give his life on the cross and go back on it just for you, the Bible says, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? So, you know, the, uh, someone that understood the love of God, you know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord? Shall tribulation, or distress, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, or height, nor depth? It says, Nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, you know, you are the only one that can separate yourself from an eternity in heaven and choose Everything opposite of heaven. See, hell is just a reciprocal of heaven. Since heaven is love, heaven is light, heaven is full of goodness, there's no death, there's no sorrow, there's no pain, there's no suffering, where, where God is not, and, and see, you know, um, wherever God is, there is love and joy and peace and goodness and faithfulness and friendship and fellowship and joy, unspeakable and full of glory and life and hope and friendship and all this good stuff. But wherever God is not, it's a reciprocal. So where there is no love, the reciprocal is hate. So hell is full of hate and sorrow and death and pain and suffering. Why? Because God is not into those things. God is into love. So God loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus gave his life for you. And I plead with you. Apostle Paul pleaded and he said that he would be even willing to even consider himself accursed for the sake of Christ that he might even bring in the Jewish, Jewish brethren to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So the Bible says God's allowed all nations to walk out their own ways, but it says now he has commanded every man everywhere to repent because one day he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained and he has given assurance unto all men that he has risen Christ from the dead. So it is finished. It is done. Jesus Christ is risen. He is the only Son. Go to him, call out his name, and you shall be born from above. He wants to fill you with his goodness, with his grace, and with the forgiveness and mercy of his great enduring love. All right, man. Thanks for your time. God bless, man. He loves you. Don't miss out on the greatest thing ever in this life and in the one to come. Call on the name of Jesus Christ and you and your family will be saved. He is waiting.